Hello and welcome viewers and subscribers of AVG News. My name is Olisi, the son of Mbombe, and I'm here just to talk about the ongoing SAT summit. You will remember that the SATEC was supposed to hold uh, an extraordinary summit on the 25th of October, but that summit uh, didn't take place. It was moved, it was postponed to yesterday where it briefly happened but it was adjourned uh, to the weekend so we we are doing this a uh, video because there seems to be uh, a lot that is going on on social media especially regarding the zimbabwean elections there are many people who are saying that the SAD has forced zimbabwean authorities to hold fresh elections there are others who are saying that zimbabwe has been forced uh, into a national transitional authority there are others as well who are saying that the sad has thrown a uh, triple c leader advocate nelson chamisa under the bus because a lot was expected uh, by his supporters uh, that uh, the sad is going to at least uh, discuss the zimbabwean political situation and reach uh, a, a, an outcome which was going to be favorable to especially the mainstream opposition party and its supporters uh, so this is what we are here to talk about we want to tell you as always the truth about this matter we want to tell you the truth about what is going on and what went on uh, during the sad summit uh, before i go ahead uh, i would like to request you to subscribe to this channel to like this video and share it so as I said, uh, the SAD summit took place uh, yesterday uh, and it was adjourned to the weekend uh, in Luanda. But what happened is that uh, there was no discussion on Zimbabwe because I think I need to state it clearly that uh, for starters, you were misled into believing that the SAD summit was an extraordinary summit to discuss Zimbabwe. Uh, although obviously because of the just ended elections and the election observer mission uh, final report that was submitted Zimbabwe was indeed supposed to be discussed whether in passing or uh, in, 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 in at length but what uh, the main reason uh, that the summit uh, was held for uh, was to discuss the security situation in the region and i'm going to read here the announcement of the meeting that was supposed to happen on the 25th of october and then you realize that uh this was not an extraordinary summit about zimbabwe as many of you had been misled into believing members of the southern african development community Community SAC will on October 25 hold an extraordinary summit of heads of state and government led by the bloc's chairperson and Golden president Joao Lorenco. The summit will discuss, among other things, the impending deployment of the SAC mission in the Democratic Republic of Congo. That is the main, that is the gist of, of this matter. Expect, uh, then I say it uh, when I posted this on, on Facebook, expect very little to change anything on the Zimbabwean election and politics. This is what I stated to you. Uh, now, the notice of the meeting uh, from Sat Troika Okan on politics and def uh, defense and security cooperation director, Professor Kula Ishmael Teletsane, who is a uh, Botswana national, reads, references made to the above subject matter, that is the extraordinary summit. I wish to humbly notify that following consultations with His Excellency João Manuel Concalves Lorengo, President of the Republic of Angola and the Chairperson of SADC, a virtual extraordinary summit of the SADC heads of state and government has been scheduled to take place on 25 October 2023 from 10 o'clock to 1300 hours Botswana time. The summit will, among others, receive and consider the report of extraordinary meetings of the Council of Ministers and Organ Tracker Summit, which were held virtually on 27 September 2023, regarding the impending deployment of the SAC mission in the Democratic Republic of Congo and the approved budget thereof. The summit will also consider the outcome of the meeting of Chiefs of Defense of the Quadripartite convened by the African Commission on 6 October 2023 in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. It is advised the meeting will be 1 plus 6. The draft agenda and program for the summit are attached here too. 
The annotated agenda will be held, uploaded in the link uh, to be communicated in due course. Please humbly accept Your Excellency the assurances of my highest consideration. So this was the letter sent to uh, all foreign ministries of the South, inviting their heads of state to attend. So there was nothing in this about Zimbabwe. We stated that expect, expect very little to happen uh, about Zimbabwe. And now what happened when uh, the South heads of state met uh, yesterday, virtually, uh, is that the chairperson of the South, uh, that is the Angolan president's president said and i'm going to read it verbatim your excellencies allow me to congratulate president emerson nangakwa of zimbabwe and his majesty king swati three the king of eswatini for the exemplary elections keyword exemplary elections that were recently conducted in your countries the tranquility and orderly manner in which they took place constituted a major victory for democracy and a significant contribution to peace stability and harmony among all living forces of the Republic of Zimbabwe in the Kingdom of Eswatini. So this is what the sad case said. There was no mention about any fresh election, no mention uh, of the sad election observer mission. So this essentially means that the sad case endorsed the Zimbabwean election. And they are calling it exemplary. So if you call an election exemplary and you are the chairperson of the sad block, you cannot then go on and force those who held those elections or those who won those elections into any national transitional authority or uh, a GNU or a fresh election. And as we have stated before, the SAD has no power to force Zimbabwe into elections. That was is bolted. It's now time for Zimbabweans to concentrate on uniting to rebuild their country and going forward. Now, uh, then the, there is a release uh, from the SAD itself about the aborted meeting, and it was released on the 31st of October 2023 in Khaboron, Botswana. It reads, the virtual extraordinary summit of the Southern African Development Community, heads of state and government, which started today, the 31st October 2023, will reconvene in person in Rwanda, Republic of Angola, on 4th November 2023. Now, people are saying that the SAD has given Zimbabwe and uh, that is Triple C and ZANU PF a time frame to submit uh, their recommendations on why Zimbabwe will not go into a, trans a national transitional authority or why uh, or stating how they want to go into that. It's all lies. The SAD summit will finalize discussions on the consolidation of peace, security, and governance in the SADC region. The SADC summit is responsible for the overall policy direction and control of function of the economy. So, the summit, as I am saying, there will be no fresh election in Zimbabwe. There will be no national transitional authority in Zimbabwe. There will be, instead, continuing ZANU-PF rule unless and until something happens, if it's going to be maybe a coup or a disaster that forces a fresh election. There won't be any fresh election forced by the SAD. We need to move on from this. The election has been held. It has been endorsed by the SAD. It has been endorsed by every power that matters in this instance. Emerson Nangakwa is going to be the president for the next foreseeable future until 2028. That is barring death or incapacitation or a coup. So this is what we have to live with. This is what we have to accept as the reality of this matter. There will be no fresh election. The lie that the site is still uh, engaged on the Zimbabwean elections must be dismissed with the content it deserves. We know that there are people that you expected to lead you in some form of... Uh, solution in, in, in some form of uh, abstaining ZANU-PF as you want if you are an opposition supporter. But those people are the ones that are selling you false hope because they have reached a cul-de-sac in their thoughts. They, is, they, they, they still want you to believe uh, that there is something happening. They will still want you to believe that the SAC is behind them. But the actuality of the 
uh, the actuality of the, of the matter on the ground is that the SADC doesn't have faith in the opposition in Zimbabwe. They believe that Triple C is a puppet of the West. That's why they are still finding ways of endorsing ZANU PF because they don't have trust in Triple C. They only have trust in ZANU PF as a former liberation movement and to them as a leading light in the fight against neocolonialism. And the other matter is that uh, Triple C has done very little to prove that it can be trusted by the SATIC, by the African Union, by any uh, anti imperialist force in the SATIC. You'll know that there is geopolitics happening, uh, there is the issue of the Ukraine war, there is the issue of the Gaza, uh, that is the fight between uh, the Israelis and the, Pakistan, and, and, and the Palestinians. And Triple C has always chosen the wrong side of the divide. There is an ongoing issue of sanctions against Zimbabwe, which the whole side gets uh, collaced around. They want those sanctions gone. Triple C has, in the eyes of the SADC and the African Union, taken a side that says the sanctions must stay. So they are not making it easy for themselves because in as much as some sections of the SADC bloc, like the Zambian president, may want to assist, Triple C is on its own, uh, making it difficult for those that still want uh, to fight against imperialism because there is this uh, growing concern that there is uh, neo-imperialist efforts that are happening, that there is neo-colonialism around African countries, around African resources, and Triple C has been seen as a representative of that regime change agenda, of that neo-colonial uh, attempt by the West to take over Africa. So they have not done enough to convince the SAC bloc and the African Union that they are indeed an alternative. Even though you listen to, to, to the Secretary General of the African National Congress, uh, Figil Mbalula, you dismissed him, you insulted him. We posted this video here where he said at first, uh, before the elections in Zimbabwe, that our, that is our SANC, our Pro only progressive force in Zimbabwe is ZANU PF. He even stated that we do have our problems with ZANU PF, but they still remain our ally. He even said, Mama Favuge, these liberation movements, because one day they are here, the next day they are out, but we still have our problems with ZANU PF. But it doesn't mean that we are now uh, gravitating towards Chamisa because, and he said, Chamisa is not, Chamisa and Triple C are not our allies. This, he was not speaking on behalf of the ANC alone. He was speaking on behalf of the whole of the African Union and of the SADC because these people believe that uh, any removal of these former liberation movements from power will result uh, in these former opposition parties then uh, closing ranks up around each other and removing the African National Congress and all these other uh, former liberation movements from power. So unless and until you prove to them that although you are an opposition movement, you are having the people at heart and you are having pan-Africanism in your mind, they will not trust you. They will not fight on your corner. Then even after President Nangaka was declared the winner, Figile Mbalula came again and just said, we congratulate ZANU PF for the win, and the win by ZANU PF represent a defeat of imperialist forces. So that is because they still believe that the MTC and Triple C now, in its, uh, as a mutation of the MTC, represent foreign interests. You remember what happened in January 2019 when there were uh, riots in Zimbabwe over the rising cost of fuel and other basic commodities. And the ANC sent a delegation that was led by Kwete uh, Mantashe. And the statement that they released after meeting ZANU-PF was that the protests were being sponsored by the West for regime change in Zimbabwe. So to them, uh, Triple C represents foreign interests. 
CCC represent a reversal of African freedom. And Triple C is not making any is not making it any better for themselves because they keep on insulting the ANC, they keep on insulting uh, Africa, and they keep on gravitating towards the West. They are supporting the sanctions. Now I'm going to read what um, the SADC says or what is seizing the SADC now in as far as Zimbabwean politics is concerned. This is a statement that they released on the 25th of October. Statement by His Excellency Mr. João Manuel Concarves Lorenzo, President of the Republic of Angola and the Chairperson of SAT, calling for the lifting of all sanctions on the Republic of Zimbabwe. The Southern African Development Community reaffirms its unwavering solidarity with the government of the people of uh, and people of the Republic of Zimbabwe in calling for lifting of sanctions that remain imposed on the Republic of Zimbabwe. This appeal by SADC for the immediate lifting of sanctions on the Republic of Zimbabwe rests on the backdrop of growing concern over the impact these sanctions continue to, to pose to the country and the SADC region. As a regional family, SAC family echoes that the targeted sanctions geared at a few individuals in Zimbabwe adversely impact the country. It is now over 20 years since the imposition of these targeted sanctions, two decades marked by the inability of the people of Zimbabwe to fully achieve their potential across various sectors as a nation. This reality, which is not new to the international community, damages Zimbabwe's image and limits its potential for access to financial and capital markets. The extent of this block to Zimbabwe's socio-economic growth on the livelihood of its people represents a modern-day atrocity which we, as the Sark family, strongly feel is an impediment that leaves one of our members behind from our common quest for regional integration, growth and prosperity. SAD therefore reiterates its wish to that the international community factors the report of the Special Rapporteur on the negative impact of unilateral coercive measures on the enjoyment of human rights made by Alena Kuhan on her visit to Zimbabwe, which proposes the lifting of these sanctions within the ambit of key principles of international law. Our call for lifting sanctions on Zimbabwe is made as a firm request to the international community for a new rhetoric, story, and direction for the country. An unconditional lift of sanctions shall create the conditions for Zimbabwe and the SAC region to consolidate its collective efforts to spearhead national and regional growth and substantively develop in critical areas of good governance, human rights, and social cohesion. It is therefore incumbent on all parties concerned to do our parts in rewriting the discourse for the government and people of the Republic of Zimbabwe. In a time where global insecurities pose food security and other pertinent challenges to the African continent and such region, the, such imposed, the sanctions imposed on the Republic of Zimbabwe create an alarming double imposed threat to its people's livelihood and survival. As such, we remain welcoming to support through the necessary means, the earnest lifting of sanctions on the Republic of Zimbabwe and trust that the humanity we share as the global community shall continue the relevant move in, shall guide the relevant move in this direction by all relevant actors through tangible actions. So this is where the such stands. They all stand against the, sanction, the sanctions on Zimbabwe and they are fighting for their removal. This is what is seizing them right now. And they believe that Zimbabwe is flocking into neighboring countries is because of the sanctions, not the looting by ZANU-PF, not uh, mismanagement of resources by ZANU-PF, but the sanctions. And they also believe that because of these sanctions, it is uh, for that reason that ZANU-PF is so hard-headed, that ZANU-PF is then uh, adamant that there will be no rule by the opposition. It is because of that, according to the SAC, that uh, there are human rights issues in Zimbabwe, that the, the, the Zimbabwean impasse politically is not going to be resolved. So 
As ZANU PF has said before that there will be no diaspora vote unless and until the sanctions are removed because they cannot go to certain areas to campaign in the world where there are Zimbabweans. That's what they're saying, that unless and until the sanctions are removed, there's not going to be any diaspora vote because they cannot reach certain areas. They're also saying that, uh, that is according to ZAD, the human rights issues that are in Zimbabwe are because there are sanctions and it's therefore difficult to negotiate the political segment that Zimbabwe needs because according to them, one party is fighting for the removal of sanctions, the other is fighting for the maintenance of the sanctions and according to the SAC and the African Union, C and the MTC in its old form are the ones that authored the sanctions on Zimbabwe. They are the ones that called for sanctions on Zimbabwe. And they are the ones that have been fighting for the maintenance of those sanctions. So unless and, and until these sanctions are lifted, there can be no uh, solution to the Zimbabwean problem. There can be no uh, engagement between Triple C and Zanupia because one is seen as the enemy of the state, the other is seen as the friend of the people and the friend of the SAC and the African Union. So this is where we stand. There will be no changes to the Zimbabwean political setup right now, there will be no changes implemented by the SAD, there will be no changes forced and forced by the SAD, whether in the form of a national transitional authority or uh, in the form of fresh elections. Let's leave with that. But at the present moment, what we need to do is to go back to the drawing board and find each other as Zimbabweans and fight to for the lifting of sanctions and the restoration of democracy in our country. Nobody is going to do it for us. We are the ones tasked with this because we have to do it for our children, for our own selves, for the future generations of Zimbabwe. We need to find each other and fight for one goal. Thank you very much. This is what we had for you. Please continue to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and share it.